Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman Wargamer. Yes, it's another open the book video, and this time it is Mag 23 Guadalcanal, a solitaire air war game. And yes, if you've been watching my videos, it looks very familiar to this one, Tally Ho, and is indeed the second in the series by Thomas Van Hare in association with his Historic Wings webpage. And in case you've missed the video on this one, I'll leave a link up there for it. So, MAG-23, Guadalcanal, what's all this about? MAG-23, Guadalcanal is a solitaire air war game in a narrative style. Tactical, operational and strategic decision-making are required. The action comes together in your logbook where you capture the stories and events of a seven and a half week deployment at Henderson's Field. Will your F4F Wildcats defeat Japan's G4M Betty Bombers and its many aces in their A6M Zeros? Will you stop the Tokyo Express? Designed by Thomas Van Hare, this is the second in a series of book-based war games. It features fast playing action that unfolds in the skies over Iron Bottom Sound and Savo. Each game day is its own game and together the days become an entire campaign as you lead your pilots into combat and face the jungle, disease, naval bombardment, fuel shortages and Japan's finest aces. Here's the famous quote from Richard Dragaskis there. Complexity, 5 out of 10. Age range, 10 plus. Number of players, solitaire. Time to play, 15 to 60 minutes. But let's have a look inside and see what the Cactus Air Force gets up to. This comes in at 92 pages, a little less than the Tally Ho we looked at in an earlier video, mainly because there aren't as many maps to print off. In fact, there aren't any maps as such, no hex and counter maps in this one, but you'll see what I mean as we go through the book. So let's see what the Cactus Air Force is going to be doing. We've got a dedication and silver stars awarded for actions during World War II. And here you can see that Thomas has got a lot in development and planning which will be very interesting to see what those are about. But here we go. Recommendations and the contents. And here we go. Very similar looking to the other book, Introduction, the background, how to play. Goals and victories, compositions of the American and Japanese squadrons. Aircraft formations. And here it says Meg 23 flew its planes in pairs, which is uh, used in the game. Game components. Now this logbook uh, isn't included in here. I think you can use anything. You can use a blank notebook. The phases, as you'll see, there are three stages, pre-flight, flight ops and post-flight. The combat operation tracks, which we'll have a look at. So a lot of information. And it's about 30 pages of rules. So here's a sort of introduction to how the game works. And here we have the sequence of play. So, it's split into three stages, which are shown here. And we're going to work through these. And each of these phases is explained in the book here. So, the first one, Schedule Combat Air Patrol, tells you what that's about. On to the next, and so on. The next section is flight ops, taking off, accidents, and all that sort of thing. 
and into the combat operations. And then post-flight gameplay and what happens in that stage. We've got things like Pistol Pete Artillery, Diseases and Infections don't happen early on in the campaign, but as uh, the days and weeks go on, that becomes more prevalent. We've also got Washing Machine Charlie, where the Japanese at night flew a Betty, or sometimes a Zero, over Lunga Point and was orbiting for several hours, sometimes dropping a bomb or two. But because it was night time, the uh, Japanese couldn't actually see where they were dropping their bombs. But there we go. Annoying. Louis Laos. Naval bombardment. So you can see lots of narrative things going on in this, uh, in this game. And it's not like uh, other games, which I love. Things like The Hunted, The Hunters, Target for Today, where the dice control every decision you make. There's a bit of that which he calls passive decisions. But then there are decisions that you have to make which will affect that mission and could indeed affect the rest of the campaign. How to do combat. There is anti-aircraft artillery that we can use. Dog fighting, of course, some clarifications, returning to base checks. I'm giving you a quick overview. It will take far too long to go into detail. Hopefully you'll see that when I do a playthrough of these. Bombing and strafing. Bailout injuries and search and rescue. Search and rescue missions. Using the game counters, as I said earlier, you don't have to use them. But it does uh, help the narrative tremendously. So 30 pages and then starting gameplay. And here are all the charts, tables, counters, maps and all that sort of thing. Now what's good about this, every week you will use a different mission table. Because things change as time goes on. The weather will change type of mission may change and so on and another thing I like about this you've got your coast watchers and marine scouts for air and sea missions and land missions and they're named so it brings them to life and a little history of the week which adds to the flavor and narrative so that goes on for all the weeks that they were there week six Week seven, and then the final days, supporting missions, supplemental missions. And this is the uh, table you use to see how well you're doing. I think it starts here. And as you're more successful in your missions, it will move up. But of course, do badly and it will move down. Get to the bottom, you lose. Get to the top, you win. These are optional use campaign tracking sheets, but I dare say we'll print these out. And then that's the thing I showed you earlier. And by the way, I believe all these are on BGG. I'll leave a link in the description so you don't have to uh, damage your book by bending it back to photocopy them. So you'll use a little marker on here to move along the phase you are doing. And then it depends. If you're doing an air combat mission, you'll use this. And again, the decisions you make, you might not want to uh, intercept that mission because you haven't got so many planes or you're low on fuel because fuel is a very important thing in this. If you want to get in close or do a long range interception, these are the rows you use. There's one for the land operations and one for sea operations. So yes, a bit of printing, but I think you're gonna to need to 
just so you know where you are in the game. Here are the counters of the aeroplanes that uh, you'll print out. There's the other side. So they're numbered. Ah, right, so that's an element, I think they call them, groups of two or three. And then when they're reduced, down by one, and so on. Here are the American planes. We've got the Wildcats, we've got the Dauntlesses. Air Cobra's there. Again, an element of two planes. You'll have a leader and a wingman. And these can be named, which makes them all the more terrible when you lose pilots, because so uh, you will lose pilots. And here are markers that we can use. Here's your status and phase markers. Markers for telling you which pilots are aces. And then the ships, which I think look really cool. These are the things you'll be going after. So I think during combat, yeah, so during combat, you'll use one of these and place, for instance, the aircraft markers on here. It's not a map, it's just to place them so you can see who's relative to who in case there are two groups going after different enemies. It sort of visualizes the combat. We've got one for land combat. And these are based on real maps, I understand. And one for sea combat. So yes, a little bit of printing. But what I'll do is laminate them and that's it, done and dusted. Then we've got the pilot roster and development calendar. So all the info goes there, tells you when I think we get other pilots in. Not sure because I haven't digested the rules completely yet. Ah, you've got the different squadrons here, that's right. So this is VMF 223, which is just F4Fs. We've got one for VMSB 232, SPDs, one for P400s, and so on. So it's a very involved game for a book game. Here's the fuel at start, and how much fuel you use as uh, time goes on. And then, which is great, all the info about the planes involved. Typo, hence zero. And this chap. Master Technical Sergeant McDonnell, who was the guy in charge of the radar. And as time went on, he got better and better at his job and gave more and more accurate readings of what was going on. So a little bit about him there. How he pushed the limits of this uh, radar, the SCR 270. And some more historical background, which is fantastic. Marine Air Combat Tactics, some more supporting history about Henderson Field, overclaiming kills, losses of Japanese planes, a bit about the Coast Watchers and Marine Scouts, attempts at night bombing, Tokyo Express, and game design notes. So lots to read in this, apart from the rules. And here we are, a little bit more about Thomas. There we are. That's MAG 23 Guadalcanal, a solitaire air war game designed by Thomas Van Hare in association with Historic Wings, his own webpage. 
Again, I've only scratched the surface. It's not a complex game, but it's got a little bit of crunch, which I love. And there are decisions that you make that will affect your current mission, but may well be for good or bad for the whole campaign, which is fantastic. So I hope you enjoyed that and you found it interesting. If you did and you haven't done so already, why not have a think about subscribing to the channel? Because it really does help. Pushing the like button of the video helps as well. And if you want to be informed of other content the channel uploads, then push that bell. As always, I encourage you to leave a comment. These are new games to me. I know Thomas has started on his volumes of solitaire air war games, but people like Mike Lambeau, who are doing a brilliant job of bringing out his own version of book war games, and Worthington with their solitaire book games as well. So it's a happening thing. But what do you think? Let me know because I love to read them. Thanks as always to my subscribers. Thank you so much. And just before I go, a little reminder that if you wish to support the channel a little bit further, well, now you can. You can buy the channel a coffee and I'll leave a link in the description for that. Or you can push the super thanks button. Either of which, if you decide to do that, will be gratefully received and just helps to keep the channel ticking along. So thank you. Right then. That's the Cactus Air Force dealt with. So until the next video, as always, you take care and goodbye.